exceptions are dirty, but exception handling doesn't need to be. So in this video, I will show you three quick tips, tidy your exception handling code and end up with beautiful, clean code. The first one is handle instead of ignoring. Unfortunately, it's quite common to find code like this, where the exception handle is swallowing the exception. So it's impossible to know if this operation was successful or not. So what you should do here, instead of catching a generic exception, you should try to aim for a specific one, because it's clear that in this example, we are ignoring a type of exception. But if we catch all the exceptions, we will ignore everything. So be specific. Why? Because usually you have three main types of exceptions. Exceptions that are unrecoverable, and on a case like that, you should rethrow them. Exceptions that are recoverable, so you should retry them. And exceptions that are ignorable. Those are quite rare, but sometimes you might want to ignore them. But at least log them, so you know that something went wrong on that case. So getting back into our code, catch the specific exception, and then log it as an error. The next tip is to remove nesting. Sometimes we find code like this. Code where inside of a try catch, we have another try catch. And this type of code is extremely hard to understand and to read. So let's focus on the catch. And what you should do instead is to first split the catch. We'll keep a catch for the generic case and another one for that specific code that it's there. And that specific code will happen when the exception error code is something. So we can move that condition to the catch itself. Once you have the condition in the catch, make sure that you remove all the magic numbers. I still don't like the way that this code is. So now that you know the type of scenario that you are handling, you can extract it and name it properly. And by the way, I'm working on a new clean code course where I have many tips like this one. So if you want to have early access to discount codes, make sure you follow the link in the description so you can get a notification once it's published. But now let's get back to our tips. The third and last tip is segregate responsibilities. We all know the single responsibility principle, but we often don't apply it to the try catch. In a scenario like this, it's clear to me that we have at least two responsibilities. In the body of our try catch, we can find the source code to send an email, but we also have a second responsibility here that often goes unnoticed. Sending an email or handling the exceptions are two different responsibilities. So what you should do instead is to quickly extract that source code to a second function and call it. This simplifies your source code and becomes so easy to read. What do you do with those exceptions that bubble up? You can find the answer in this video right here, where I show you how to use exception handlers in your ASP.NET API. 